With this hand, I will lift your sorrows. Your cup will never empty, for I will be your wine. With this candle, I will light your way into darkness. With this ring, I ask you to be mine. I mean, he talks a good game and all, but if weak, indecisive men are looking for a mascot to rally behind, then surely Victor Van Dort from The Corpse Bride is who they're looking for. Seriously, this guy is the villain of the movie, and I'm going to explain why that is, so stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm McGann, this is The Fangirl, and it's finally time that I tell you what I really think about The Corpse Bride. Um, honestly, it's stylistic, so it looks fantastic. Good job, Laika. But the plot and songs are just horrendous. I remember when this movie came out and I was so ready for a new Nightmare Before Christmas, but then was so utterly disappointed with what we got. If you haven't seen The Corpse Bride, the gist is that these fish merchants have made enough money to buy their skittish son, Victor, a marriage to a young lady of society because her parents own a bunch of land, but they're otherwise broke. So they basically sell off their daughter, Victoria, as their gateway back to this cushy lifestyle. But Victor is a bumbler who ends up running running off into the woods to practice his wedding vows, and then unintentionally places the wedding ring on the decayed hand of Emily, a body barely buried in the ground. So Emily, who was murdered while attempting to run away with her one true love, decides that she and Victor are now married. But what starts as this sitcom level of misunderstanding keeps escalating into a worse and worse situation, all because Victor literally refuses to have a backbone or make a decision. So how is the cowardly Victor Van Dort the villain of the movie? Well, let's look at his actions. While it is true that in 1800s England, an arranged marriage would be a pretty standard practice, Victor's attitude about marriage is odd. He has a very 2000s mentality about it that he wants to get married for love. And while on the surface, there's nothing wrong with that concept, it is out of place for the setting. In a world where arranged marriages are normal, the idea of marrying for love would not be. So Victor would have been raised that he'll marry and learn to love whomever his family decides upon. That's the attitude that Victoria seems to have. She's nervous, of course, but she knows that what has been decided will be what happens, so there's no use to fall apart and panic over it. However, it's all fine because Victor briefly meets Victoria and decides with very little interaction that, yeah, she'll do. Funny how being in love falls to the wayside when a pretty girl gives you the time of day, huh, Vic? But then Victor panics, runs into the woods, and ends up accidentally married to Emily. So he tells Emily about Victoria and how he's already engaged, and surely they can't be married because Emily said no vows and there was no one to officiate the wedding, right? Oh no! Instead of being direct and honest, Victor becomes manipulative, and that is the exact moment that he becomes the villain in this film. Instead of explaining himself, Victor exploits Emily's enthusiasm for being married by tricking her into taking them back to the land of the living to meet Victor's mother. But then Victor slips away to go talk to Victoria and expresses his feelings for her just so that Emily can walk in, get upset, and drag Victor back down to the land of the dead. And Emily is so hurt that Victor feels bad, like the weasel he is, and he decides, you know what? I think I actually do have feelings for Emily. Mind you, he was just in his feels for Victoria minutes before that. Hmm, just any girl in front of you will do, huh, Vic? Seriously, Emily is even giving Victor potential outs like, you don't like me because of my eye, right? And instead of being decent and saying something like, no, no, you're lovely, but you're dead and I'm not. And I'm also engaged to someone else, so this isn't right. Nah, Victor hems and haws and just cannot have a hint of honesty with Emily. So he decides, meh, I guess I could love her. Might as well, since things are ruined with Victoria now. That would take some effort to fix. And 
and that lack of dedication to his fiancée, whom he just loved a hot minute ago, ultimately leaves Victoria in the horrible position of being sold off to Lord Barkis, a serial killer. Literally, for whatever reason, the writers couldn't do any better. But Victoria's entire safety is hinged on her being single. And the only reason that she is single and open to the Black Widow Barkis is because of Victor. Vic might as well have fed Victoria to the wolves with his actions. And listen, I'm not saying that you shouldn't make the best of a bad situation or that Victor couldn't really fall for Emily, but Victor is so blatantly playing both of these women and he only cares about whichever one is in front of him at that moment. It is gross. But all right, Victor is with Emily now. It's settled, right? Nope. Victor's old coachman, Mayhew, dies and appears in the Land of the Dead, informs Victor that Victoria is about to get married to someone else, and Victor, who married Emily already, has the nerve to be upset. He's not only visibly hurt, but he has the audacity to let the words, how could she, escape his lips. What in the name of narcissistic double standards is that? Especially after Victor's already decided that he wants to be with Emily. And make no mistake, Victor isn't going to go rush into the church and save Victoria with his true love for her because she gets married in the movie and put in extreme danger. But to make sure that Victor is proven to be an overly dramatic crybaby, he decides to make his wedding to Emily super duper real by holding a wedding where he drinks poison and thereby has to stay with the corpse bride forever. And the only reason this doesn't happen is because Emily catches a glimpse of Victoria and feels bad. So Emily is the one who stops Victor from dying, tells Victor to go back to Victoria, and then Emily dissolves into butterflies, either because she's resolved her unfinished business or because she's so heartbroken that she just can't keep going on. It's unclear, but I suspect it's a mixture of both. The point, though, is that Victor and Victoria are back together with absolutely no work or even mild effort on Victor's part. He doesn't even have to deal with Lord Barkis. Barkis accidentally drinks the poison and sorts himself out. So our real hero in this movie, the one who stood up and did the right thing and took the afterlife into her own hands, was Emily. Victoria got used like a prop in this movie with no agency or free will of her own. And Victor is our true antagonist. He plays with the emotions of both women. He's extremely manipulative to Emily. His lack of dedication almost gets Victoria killed. And he never once makes a decision as to who he really wants to be with. The decision gets made for him when Emily removes herself from the equation because Victor cares so little about who he's with as long as someone is making him feel validated as a person. I seriously think we have a case here for Victor Van Dort being a lesser narcissist which is somebody who has no self-control or self-awareness for how their actions impact others. They just do things that impulsively fuel their own ego. And yet, Victor is seen as our protagonist who's done nothing wrong and can only fail upward. This dude is a toxic wreck. And I feel bad for Victoria because, let's be honest, Victor is going to spend their entire marriage just wandering off with any woman who bats her eyes at him. There's no signs of a strong, healthy marriage in the making here. Honestly, it's like this film had to invent Lord Barkus to ensure that someone was available to draw the villainous focus away from Victor. Yes, Lord Barkus is clearly a bad guy up to no good, but had Victor been a decent human being, Barkus would have had no wiggle room to jump into the situation. You know, if the groom wouldn't have gone missing, Barkus could not have volunteered to marry Victoria. And Victor only went missing because he wouldn't have an honest conversation with Emily. All because Vic didn't want to be a bad guy and correct a stranger, so he thought he could maneuver his way into toying with both women's feelings while also making no effort to decide what he actually wanted. So it all boils back to Victor causing every problem in this movie, meaning he, Victor Van Dort, is our true bad guy. And that's not me being some ultra feminist here that just just hates men. I dare you to watch the movie for yourself and tell me that I'm wrong. I might be overthinking it, but that's literally my job. Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram 
as my own personal self. And I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey McGann, I wanna mail you something. How do I do that? Easy, just click the about tab on my channel page and my most current PO box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members. Bye.